Welcome to the lecture Governance in the Digital Age. We arrived at the last video of our lecture on the state of affairs, opportunities and challenges for the Board of Directors. This section is based on findings of an academic study suggesting a framework that highlights several timely board practices that have the potential to improve the ways board strategizes under conditions of increasingly digitalization. We will see how boards shape strategic decisions in a digital era and how boards take these decisions and the context of these decisions in the digital era. At the end, I will present to you the last big question. So, in conclusion, we will see how the board members can adapt better for this new environment. So, let's move forward. We saw up till now that in the digital era, it is important for companies to develop and establish capacities and capabilities that leads the board and the companies to explore both mature and emerging opportunities and technologies. One term that can help us to understand this is exploration. Exploration is about developing new technologies and opportunities by applying search, discovery, innovation, autonomy and embracing variation. Another term is exploitation. Exploitation is about exploiting existing assets by focusing on efficiency, productivity, control, and variance reduction, especially by an environment characterized by technology and market uncertainty. Having both capabilities of explore and exploit has been found to have positive implications on firm performance. To be successful, companies can benefit from exploiting existing assets and exploring new core technologies simultaneously. In these situations, boards may enhance these capabilities by embracing dynamism, dynamism and change rather than stability and certainty. By embracing dynamism and changing, they often encourage earning, integrating and transferring knowledge as well as accepting failure, then placing organizations in a best position to handle business transitions and strategic change. Decisions are shaped over time in a process where multiple aspects impact the final results. More specifically, a whole range of behavior in the decision process shapes the actual decision. This behavior referred to as shaping strategic decisions. It takes place before the actual decision taking. It predominantly takes place outside the boardroom. For example, executive may consult board members to test their ideas. As such, they seek advice from board members who serves as sources of knowledge and expertise. With these arguments, it is evident that boards of directors influence the preparations of decision proposals and, therefore, final decisions. Digitalization causes constantly changes in strategic contexts, therefore disrupting existing value chains, business models and industry structures. As we saw, firms, companies need to keep up with these changes to maintain competitive advantage and relevant for events for stakeholders and customers. Traditionally, boards just get involved in the shaping of strategies in a few companies. However, authors suggest more board involvement in this process, claiming that without board involvement in shaping strategies, companies will be disrupted and unable to compete in fast-changing digital environment. Thus, a scenario where boards and management work together for using their sensing capabilities to actively scan, anticipate, interpret and discuss opportunities and threats. Empirical studies already showed evidence that board members and executives 
discuss the strategy in between board meetings, being an effective way of shaping the strategy as board members can broaden and overcome header narrow search horizons vested in many executive managers who may be tired to follow established perspectives. By broadening these search horizons, board members enhance scanning and exploring activities that contribute to sensing capabilities. The process of shaping strategic decisions is mostly an internally focused process, where the interaction between the board members and the executive becomes focal. Digitalization eliminates organizational boundaries, which expands the process of shaping strategies, and the board can benefit from interactions with wider audience inside and outside the company to sense opportunities and threats. And this is important input to shape strategies. By establishing virtual networks with the external environment, boards can improve their creativity, sense more opportunities, and connect to prospective suppliers and strategic partners. Through these and other related activities, the board plays an important role in shaping new commercialization opportunities across markets and technologies, therefore providing sensing capability to the firm. Boards typically take decisions when board members approve, disapprove, or refer proposals brought to them by the top management team or the CEO. In this process, they use their knowledge and experience to assess the strategic desirability of proposals presented and decisions suggested by the executives. Digitalization can reshape the ways in which information is generated, aggregated, and made available to decision makers. Consequently, this will reframe the whole of individual decision makers, who more frequently embrace data when taking decisions. Data-driven decision-making is considered to be of more quality as they have been found to have a positive impact on companies' performance. As a result, companies apply these methods in a drastically growing rate, and maybe boards will embrace data-driven decisions as common practice. And this will be a big transition for boards, who have been used to take decisions by using the experience and knowledge that board members possess. Instead of relying on intuition and asserting their opinions, what the future holds, boards will form their decision more frequently based on what the data says. Some authors argue that the, the process of taking strategic decisions is like to be a less human-centered and knowledge-based activity. However, access and ability to transform data may be an increasingly important factor that boards should attend. John Chambers, the chairperson of Cisco, demonstrates this practical relevance of this issue, saying, My worry is we will make decisions without the right data. Our key is, how do you capture this data the way it allows you to combine information in a way that makes business outcomes? And actually, this is the challenges we face. This is key issue on the usage of data, and it is very difficult for board members to make sure that the data used to support their decisions were not manipulated in a way that creates biases prejudice or some important aspect is missing, as this is the nature of big data and data analytics. Therefore, having access to the right data that is visualized and communicated in an understandable way will enable boards to take decisions and seize opportunities and threats in real time. This will require data scientists that can visualize the sense of what the data says, and executives that can communicate the content of the data in a board member that can understand how question the data, follow it, 
by efficient decisions. And finally, this requires the bot to possess seizing capabilities that allow them to make timely responses and form clear decisions. In a digital world, researchers draw a scenario where the influence is extending the borders of the organization. In other words, that a wide range of stakeholders can influence the content of the strategy. This predicted change occurs as digitalization causes availability, access, and flow of information to increase between organization and individuals. As a result, and based on mutual interests and objectives, individuals and organizations access and share information and knowledge with few restrictions in a digital era, which may therefore impact the content of the strategy of the company. The example of TripAdvisor shows that digitalization allows sharing of information to intensify competition and change industry structure. It has forced boards and company owners to become increasingly attuned to voices of the external environment. Consequently, they are changing their organizational practices business development activities as well as the content of strategy accordingly. It may cause the board to engage in more oversight and monitoring considering the risks of sharing information and external engagement. In contrast, it may reduce monitoring of the board as companies subject to online influences are consequently being managed and monitored by people external to the organization. Authors still suggest a scenario where boards encourage their firms to apply short-term strategic planning where real-time responses become increasingly central in building long-term advantages. This requires organizations to possess dynamic capabilities in order to explore opportunities ahead of competition and the board plays an important role in orchestrating team dynamics in the upper echelon of organizations and therefore influencing the dynamic capabilities of their organizations, both sensing, seizing, and reconfiguring capabilities. Boards will need to constantly encourage executives to manage different and inconsistent organizational alignments simultaneously. For example, boards may need to embrace the paradox of exploiting existing assets at the same time as they explore new technologies and markets. To explore and exploit at the same time requires that board formulates a vision and a strategy that justifies the ambidextrous behavior and intent. Consequently, boards need to encourage behavior that emphasizes open the value of experimentation and failure while promoting feedback to enable learning and constant adjustments. Current governance is more or less based on historical data, and our current frameworks are backwards while we need more forward thinking. Boards need to know which requires a lot of courage. Directors need to be able to ask questions and be honest about what they don't know and don't understand. Or they will not be able to provide the level of oversight and insight required today. Therefore, I invite you to reflect, research and answer the last big question. What are the tools and actions that can change board of directors' mindset to fit the requirements of the digital age? I would love to know your ideas and insights. We arrived to the end of our lecture. I hope my insights and collection of literature benefit your understanding of how digital technologies are impacting the board of directors. This is an exciting field of research, which I am 100% dedicated in my doctoral study. 
If you wish to bounce ideas or questions with me, please feel free to send me an email and get in touch. Best wish, and I look forward to meeting you again, wishing you all the best in your learning journey. See you!